Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this game here is actually a normal game, because recently I haven't been feeling that great. <laughs> so I haven't really been playing much TFT, and I didn't want to play ranked when I wasn't playing at 100%, because, you know, my performance wouldn't be that good. I'm sure I would do fine, but, you know, I... I don't want to share anything with you guys that isn't really well played, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so I'll just say it here at the beginning. This game is not perfect at all. Uh, yeah, and it, it's also just a, a normal game. My other games that I posted were ranked. This game, just, you know, casual, normal game, nothing serious. And to start out, I just, you know, pick up all the pairs I see. Here I know that the um, I know that the minions are going to drop some gold, two gold, so I don't need to sell Twitch, right? I can wait and buy this Ziggs. And I'm also scouting, and you might be wondering why am I scouting so early? It's because I want to know if I can maybe play three star Ash and Jax. Don't worry. I got this. And then I also noticed when I was scouting, I saw some Warwicks out of the pool. And I don't really have items for Warwick, so I figured I wouldn't try to play that. I just play something else. And here I get a little lucky, I find a Kali, right? I have three, three multi-strike already. And I have uh, Jack's pair, Ash, right, a Kali. There's a Nunu in the shop, which could have been Honey Mancy. And actually, um, if I'm being honest, <laughs> I definitely just wanted to play multi-strikers. And since it was a normal game, I just decided to play it. But I do think Honey Mancy probably would have been stronger. It was a strong chance, right? Here, um, I'm not a fan of Eldritch. I think it's a little weak. And I don't actually have, you know, that many Eldritch units. I have one Ash. Plus, Eldritch kind of feels weak unless you get 10 Eldritch, which, of course, kind of wins the game instantly. But aside from 10 Eldritch, it doesn't really feel good, to be honest. Like, any, every time I've played it, I haven't really felt like it's been very strong. I think you need a lot of Eldritch augments, like School Mascot. And here I decided to go reroll, because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play Ash and Jax. I think it'll be fun. I have three Multi-Striker, right? Here I did play the Blitzcrank over the one-star Jax. I don't know who was stronger. It probably was. I think if I had Nunu from the last shop, three Honey Mancy would have been stronger here for sure. With the with the two star Blitz and you know, yeah, he would have been a lot stronger. Then I also could have gone Nasher's Tooth. Uh, so I definitely, <laughs> I definitely was playing for fun, right? Because I I think if I was coaching someone, I would definitely recommend them to play Honey Mancy from this position. Uncontested Honey Mancy. There is a Hunter player taking Kogma. But it's not a big deal, you can just go for Ziggs, carry, Ziggs, carry, Blitzcrank, main tank. See here, I have so many, so many Honey Mancy units. I definitely should have just played Honey Mancy. Even here, I think I should probably pivot into Honey Mancy and just play it. Even though I uh, I skipped a Nunu. But I think this was a very easy Honey Mancy game. Could have three-starred everything very easily, had so many Ziggs and Blitzcranks. But I did play Jax and Ash reroll this game. That's what I decided on, because I just wanted to have fun. <laughs> so yeah. And the reason I have Bow on Ash and Cloak on Jax is because Jax likes Crown Guard, War Monks, and Bloodthirster. And then uh, I think Callista and Ash both really like Rage Blade, Rage Blade with Runans. I think that's their highest damage. I might be wrong about that, but... I do believe that's correct. And then you you just have, you know, uh, armor pen on another oh, unit, like Evan Shroud or Last Whisper. And that gives you max damage. Then here, of course, I'm just holding a bunch of one stars on my bench. I'm not doing it super efficiently. This is a two star Kali and a Hecarim, of course. I'm buying them all. And now I just need to cast it in, right? Cast it in for 5 multi-striker. 
I have 10 gold. I'm putting the units in the team planner so you guys can see them all. Here we have Camille, right? Camille, Callista. Then we play Shen. He gives two traits, Pyro and Bastion. Shen, Hecarim, Akali, Cassidy. And then not Jace, but Jax and Ash. And that's it. And then if you get to level 8 or 9, you can play something like Zareth and like Tom Kench for Arcana. It can be pretty strong. But it is usually difficult, a little difficult, unless you have a lot of... Well, I don't recommend you play this unless you have maybe a Rageblade or, you know, something for Ash or Jax. Like, I have no items for either of them right now, so this is very, very greedy. And it's even greedier. I go for the bow. <laughs> I could have made War Monks, I could have made um, Crown Guard, I could have made Rage Blade, but I went for another bow. And, you know, I think it's clearly because I'm playing a normal game, right? I understand that it's just for fun, so I'm not really trying super hard. But I would say uh, don't, don't play like this, generally. <laughs> uh, you don't want to, like, force comps and not make items early on. This loses you a lot of health. Especially when you're playing a comp like this, where your early game is kind of your strong suit, right? It's a one cost reroll. So that's like when you're strongest in the early game. You get you kind of fall off late game and then you can't compete with like level nine players with a bunch of legendaries or like high trade comps like fairy and stuff like that. It becomes very difficult. Uh, especially if you can't get to the Camille legendary, right? To get seven multi striker makes it even harder. So generally, I'd say don't play like this, <laughs> but in this case, I definitely should have taken, I'd say a belt and just gone War Mox on Jax. I think that's the strongest early game, or even just Rage Blade on Ash is really good, because Rage Blade, you need three, uh, three rods if you want to play this, technically, because you want to have Crown Guard on Jax and Double Rage Blade on Ash, so you need at least three rods. And here I was just using my free rerolls. Oh, yeah. And I'm selling all the two stars, holding one stars to make the the one cost pool a little bit smaller. So I have a higher chance to hit Ash and Jax. I haven't really done much positioning or anything. I don't think it um, it matters too much for the game, and also I just was a little lazy. <laughs> I didn't really want to scout every single round, especially in the early game when it's not as important. It's very unfortunate I won the last fight. I think if I scouted I could have lost it, because I could have positioned very badly. Like I could have put Ash in the front line, uh, Jax all the way in the back, right? Basically get everyone killed early so that I wouldn't win the fight and then I could keep a loose streak. Here, even though I did kind of force multi-striker, I did end up having five jaxes already. The only issue is I didn't have a single item for jax or ash yet. Uh, which is my own fault, right? I was playing super greedy. I took a bow off of the carousel. I definitely should have gone war monks or crown guard or rage blade. Should have made something. I end up getting a cloak. This could be Bloodthirster if I get a sword, but more than likely it is just a Rage Blade. I actually get a ton of money. I do want to keep Shen right because he's in my comp later. I just make the Rage Blade, I believe. Yeah. And then I put another bow here so she gets a little more attack speed when she's attacking. It does do something, especially in the early game. I'm just going to buy this charm because it's free. There's no reason not to. I'm not rolling that much yet. Oh, I already got Ash too. It's very nice. And here I don't want to roll because I want to try and stay above 50 gold if possible. Especially since I only have three Ashes. Um, I do have Prismatic Ticket which changes the chances that I find 3 star Ash. A lot but it feels more efficient to just let my my gold interest stack up to 50 
Unfortunately, I lost, or not lost, I won the fight like two rounds before. Otherwise, I would have a a six lose streak here, which would mean I'll be getting three extra gold per turn. Here, since I'm trying to force a reroll, I don't want explosive growth. You have my sword is pretty good. Pandora's is not necessary because my items are quite good. High voltage could be okay, but aside from Jax, there's not really AP in multi strikers. And raining gold, eh, we have so much gold from prismatic tickets, it's kind of overkill. So it's just you have my sword, you get a sword, it's not bad. It could be Steric Gauge, it could be, you know, um, Bloodthirster, maybe Edge of Night if we have to. I'd rather have the other items I said. And then we just start slow rolling, right? Keep all the one stars on bench. Get a free training dummy charm. Use our free rolls. We do draw below 50, so I saw Shen here to make 50. And again, I haven't really positioned specifically for anyone. I definitely should be. Again, <laughs> just remember, I'm... Mm, let's just say I'm very lazy this game. I'm just kind of relaxing as I play. Not taking it super seriously. But I'd say, generally speaking, you should be scouting your opponents almost every single round. Pretty much every single round. Just to give yourself the highest chance to win. Because you can position way better if you know where your opponents are positioned. Let's go ahead and buy this charm. It's only one gold. Do a little bit of a roll down. We have six jacks, six ash. Hecarim two. We have seven jacks, eight jacks. Should probably keep rolling, right? We can hit three star jacks here. Pick up the units we need. Another Hecarim. Maybe we can go Hecarim three. We actually found four Hecarims. When we're barely level five. <laughs> it's kind of impressive. We're pretty close to jacks now. It's a bit unfortunate though, if you think about how much we rolled, um, we had five jaxes like three rounds ago, and we still only have eight. I think having three star jacks here wouldn't be unreasonable. It's okay because we're still loose streaking, but the one, the one round we, we won earlier kind of messed up the low streak, the loss streak by a lot. Which is pretty unfortunate. Here I should definitely go for Rod. I think anything but Rod is uh, kind of crazy. And just to cast it in Opal Vex. It's one less gold. But I want to get cast it in. Yep, cast it in two right now. And maybe cast it in three eventually. But if we do look when we're scouting here. There is actually some portal players. So they're going to take more Cassidans out of the pool. Like this guy already has three three Cassidans on board. This guy also has one Cassidan on board. Makes it a little difficult to find. Let's take the free charm. It actually ends up being two gold because we found it we took this charm earlier and we had one gold from it. Yeah, four Cassidans already, so it is possible to hit three star cast. This is our next unit we're going to play, right? We want to get Pyro plus Bastion in. Attack speed on the whole team plus armor and MR on the whole team. They're both very strong traits. we actually win a fight <laughs> yeah <laughs> and if you notice we have a rage blade uh, yeah that's pretty much the biggest difference so if i had just made the rage blade earlier right taking the the rod off the first carousel then we'd probably have a lot more health at this point that's why i say you know never be greedy with items just make whatever works you know when you can and play around it Mm, that's all there is to it. We finally hit Jax 3. But you see how long it took? We had 5 Jaxes on 2-7. 
It's 3-6 and we just hit and we had to roll below 40 gold again. Now we're hopefully win this fight, right? Because then we can get back above 40. Should be quite nice. Again, though, I didn't scout because um, <laughs> I was not playing super seriously. Um, if I scouted, I could position better. I wouldn't be hitting a cinder here, maybe. It's a chance. We do actually end up winning. I wouldn't say it's lucky, but... Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's lucky, actually. We're, we're quite strong, right? Because we've been rolling so much compared to opponents. who are just kind of leveling up. So it makes sense that we would win these fights. As of right now, at least. And off the whoops, we're either hoping for Hecarim items, Bloodthirst Hysterics, or, you know, another Rageblade. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get either of those. We do get a Steric Gauge, which we are going to be forced to make. Here, I'm just looking for Ash 3. I'm about to hit a Kali 3 when I... Oh my goodness, yeah. This roll is uh, very, very weird, because I'm about to hit a Kali 3 before Ash 3. I did end up hitting the Ash. Here I just roll down a bit harder, because I want to see if I can find a Kali 3. I don't find it... yeah, that is unfortunate. I think I got a bit unlucky, to be honest. I rolled so much. And then I just wanted to find a Kali 3 so I could give her some items, potentially. Like, Steric Gauge plus Hodge. But since I didn't find her, I reforged the tier. And I think I would have taken a lot of items, to be honest. A glove is okay, it is just not really what I was hoping for. Uh, a rod was good, because it could have been Crown Guard. Bow could have been Last Whisper. There's a lot of things I could have taken. Here, I do just take Blinding Speed. I'm not really looking at the other two. Freaky Friday is very good. Uh, Tiny Bedelli is also quite good. But I just wanted to get perfect items. And I thought, you know, oh, this also gives me anti-heal. It's quite nice. Then I don't have to worry about finding more bows and such. Because this can be red buff plus less whisper. So it solves my... I get three item ash. I get a red buff and a less whisper. Which are the utility you need, right? Anti-heal and armor pen. They're really good. Here I was thinking, what should I make? And I was thinking, you know what, I'd rather go for 3 star Hecarim with this many Hecarims on bench. Which means I want Steric's Gauge plus either Bloodthirster or Hodge, some healing rate, and then another Steric's Gauge, if possible. Because the best Hecarim build is actually double Steric's plus Bloodthirster. My items this game did end up being a bit unfortunate. I think they could have done a lot better, a lot better. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. The game is still winnable. It is also somewhat my fault. <laughs> because I forced multi-striker when I didn't have any augments for it, right? Any, like, multi-striker specific augments, I should say. I definitely could have just kept it simple and gone honey mancy. Then there was also a chance I got a Honeymancy emblem, and I could have maybe hit 7 Honeymancy with the Prismatic Augments. Here, this is so unfortunate. I had to roll so much for a Kali 3. It's, I think that was very unlucky. It happens, of course, but it is very unfortunate for me, because it means it's very unlikely that I can get to level 9 this game. So I had to roll so much here. And I only have 10 gold. So I'm only getting 1 interest per round. Basically if I lose a, lose any rounds at this point. I kind of just lose the game. Here luckily I do end up winning. I wouldn't say it's super lucky. Because I do have a lot of combat power. But uh, <laughs> having to roll down for the, the Kali so hard. Was very very bad. It made me a lot weaker. Now, what do we want, right? 
A bloodthirster would be good. Double stereo gauge. If we can get this belt. So belt would be nice here. And we get it. Very nice. So here we can go double sterex gauge. And then we can potentially go hand of justice, hodge on Hecarim for healing. I do prefer Bloodthirster, but obviously we have a um, a glove on our bench. So we kind of have to play around what we get, not you know imaginary items that we don't have. If only the world worked like that. Just imagine that we have a sword and cloak on bench and we get it. Here I actually scout. I think it's like, <laughs> is it like the first time I scout to reposition the whole game? And you can see I'm putting in Kali in front of Ash, so the Last Whisper and Anti Heal are hitting the same thing. Hecarim, I'm just putting him a bit centered, so his AOE will hit more units. And then I keep casting on the right side because he is a multi striker, so he will do some damage even without any items. And you can see it at 900. It's not incredible, but it's still, you know, damage. Damage is damage. I do end up buying this charm because it is only two golds, and I think keeping the wind streak is a big deal. Because the wind streak is our path to three star Hecarim, and also level eight. 47 multi striker. So, definitely a big deal. And here I actually did position for this person, for this person. Uh, I explained this in my other video, but Rise, when he casts his ultimate, the portals will kind of hit nearby targets. So if you put your carry in the opposite corner of him, like basically if Rise is left, back left and you're, you know, bottom left, he's top left, you're bottom left, then he will hit you a lot more easily with his ultimate once he kills a few of the frontline units. So you want to be as far away from the rise as possible when you're fighting a rise carry. Here I'm just trying to stack up my gold. I'm checking to see if any how many Cassidens are missing to know if I can hit Cassidens 3. And I see that six Cassidens are missing and this person has a rise 2 star. So it's maybe unlikely that I can hit Cassidens 3. To be fair though, um, I will say it's incorrect. Most of this gameplay is kind of incorrect. <laughs> um, I think going for a Kali 3 was probably incorrect. Trying to go for Cassidy 3 also incorrect. Because I don't plan on keeping items on these units. So they don't really do anything. I should not be rolling here for Cassidy. I should be leveling up. Again, if I was coaching someone, I'd say you should go 7 here. Look for your Hecarim 3. You know, maybe get a lucky Callista, and then get to level eight. Hope you get Camille at this point, right? This is this is what you would be doing. Here I'm scouting my opponents, and I see I need to switch sides. So I move all my carries together, clump them on the right side, and I just go to make protectors Val because my Jax is three star, and Jax likes getting shields and resistances, right? Like Crown Guard, Fimble Winter, or sorry, protectors Val in. TFT is what it's called. And this is very close. If this was two star Gwen, I probably would have lost. <laughs> but this guy, he saved 40 gold. He's very greedy. He thought he could uh, stay alive, I guess. Or maybe he just didn't think, you know. I I'm not sure. But he did get a little unlucky because I'm the only person win streaking as of right now. And I'm also on a big win streak, right? I'm on a, an eight win streak. It's pretty big. Here I go ahead and level, and I do buy this Phantom Emblem, because this means I only need to find one Callista. If I find one Callista, I can go 7 Multi Striker for the next fight, which means I get to keep my win streak a little longer. Which is also why I'm continuously rolling, because I'm really, really trying to hit these 3 stars. Hecarim 3, 
Cassidy in three. Hecarim three found, and then I dupe Cassidy. I think this is a mistake, again. Um, obviously, I said I'm going to make a lot of mistakes because I'm not playing seriously this game. But it's most likely a mistake to dupe Cassidy when I already have so many Shens. I might as well go for Shen 3 as well at that point. It's actually... <laughs> it's like, once you make the wrong play, you might as well keep making the wrong play, right? If you back out, it, it can end up worse than it would have. Also, I just killed someone who was level 10, if you noticed. So I am actually quite strong. Level 7 and I killed a level 10 player. I do think the, the emblem helped a lot. Because it gives a lot of healing when you have 7 multi-strikers. Unfortunately, you see these guys are actually quite strong. And this guy has a Zephyr, which is very painful for me. I do get a lucky Camille here, which is actually insane. Very, very good. Um, I don't think I repositioned for the Zephyr, which is definitely a mistake. I wasn't paying attention that much, I believe. So I just let it hit me. Definitely, definitely a mistake, though. Should be repositioning for Zephyr right now. Does it punish me? No, it doesn't. So I don't actually fight the player with the Zephyr. So I don't have to worry too much. Fortunately. Yes. And I do win this because I got a lucky Camille. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Riot, for the Camille. Appreciate it. And here we do just want Rageblade for Callista. I think Runans is fine as well. But Rageblade is really good on Callista. I think you should always have at least one Rageblade on Callista and Ash. It just it's way too much attack speed compared to everything else. Here I of course roll for a charm and I bought it immediately. I bought Earthquake. And then I also leveled because I can play Shen, right? Play Shen, find Callista 2, and I do find a Callista in shop. And very conveniently, if I win the next fight, I can actually buy this Callista from the shop and hold it on bench. Which will mean my gold was spent perfectly. I do kind of give up on going level 9. Uh, I had to waste... Well, I didn't have to, but I did waste <laughs> a lot of gold 3-starring Akali and Kassadin. Which is why I, I teach people this a lot. If you're going to 3-star something, it needs to have a purpose. So this game, if you'll notice, Cassidy and Akali are not doing anything. <laughs> they are not worth the gold I spent on them. A 2-star Tom Kench giving me Arcana and stunning the entire enemy team would be worth so much more than what this 3-star Akali and Cassidy are doing. On top of that, 2-star Callista, 2-star Camille, these are way more valuable than the 3-star Akali and Cassidy. So generally speaking, you do not want a 3-star anything that does not have a point. If you're not giving it items, it doesn't have any traits, no, like it doesn't really do anything, and you're, again, not giving it items, it's probably not worth using all your gold on. Generally, it's more efficient to level up. Here I do think I outposition this person, but he gets very, very nice, very, very nice um, artifact items on his Diana. A trench coat is a big deal. Gives him so much tankiness. Makes it way too difficult to kill all his units. I would say my items are extremely good though. My items are very, very good. Uh, I would obviously much rather have Bloodthirster than Hodge on Hecarim. But um, beggars can be choosers. <laughs> you know, I took what I got and I made an item. And it gave me an 11 win streak, right? So, I will say again though, uh, since I, I was wasted so much gold on these units that I didn't need to 3 star, 
Uh, I kind of did it for fun, to be honest, just because, you know, ooh, shiny, shiny gold unit. Very fun. Here I'm rolling for Callista too, by the way. Okay, I found her. No, no need to roll now. Uh, just go ahead and take a War Monks. The other items can be good, but they already have items. Everyone has items, so I'd rather just give it to Jax. Because one single item on my other units is not going to do a ton. I do try to reposition. But it actually doesn't matter, because this person's entire board is one star. Um, he has, I think, only, yeah, pretty much only four two stars, which is very weak. I'm a lot stronger than him. This person is very strong, though. Four chrono is incredibly strong against multi-strikers, because multi-strikers are very, very, very bursty. They kind of end the fight, like, you know, boom instantly the fight is over in like 10 seconds so if you stun the entire enemy team my team in this case in their multi-strikers for four seconds with chrono they're just dead because multi-strikers are quite squishy and they do a lot of burst so the second you freeze them yeah the fight's basically over there's not much you can do here i do dodge zephyr out positioned him and i dodge diana plus I buy the Silver Veil for the Tom Kench and Diana to avoid the CC. There's the Chrono stun, unfortunately. If I lose this, it's always because of Chrono. Because Chrono is just, once again, so, so good against multi-strikers. I do hope winning, winning this. Uh, this is a positioning diff. I think if he's Zephyr, Callista, or Ash, he could have won that. I cannot greed. <laughs> Major Gambit. I need a real charm. But you can see, right? You can see what the issue is here. My opponent has so much gold, he can get to level 10. And me, I can't even get to level 9. It's virtually impossible at this point. Here, I'm waiting to reposition. He does actually guess on accident where I'm going to position, unfortunately. If I had just uh, stayed bottom right, it would have been better for me. Sometimes though, when you have very obvious champs like Callista and Ash, you know, these champs kind of have to be in corners. Um, you don't really have a choice. This is quite unlucky, this stun that went through both of my carries, and then I get stunned again. This fight is a little bit unlucky. I definitely could have won this uh, again. You saw what Zephyr did, right? Zephyr won him to fight. Here I didn't know what he wanted. He does need blue buff, but I was like, I can't get blue buff from him anyways, so I was like, I just wanted to check if he needed the spatula. And then I, uh, there's nothing really to take here besides gargoyles. And then I just can just give it to Jax. This charm is not really good enough. Dragon is really good though. More frontline is a big deal. Because it means I can tank the chrono stun for longer. And now we just pray. <laughs> I'm stuck level 8, my opponent's level 10. Uh, again, this game, if I had just kept it simple and leveled for the... Um, leveled for level 9, level 10, you know, not wasted a bunch of gold for a Nikali 3 and Kessin 3 that don't have items, then I definitely could have won this game quite easily. That's my opinion. And you can see here, I'm not even close to winning, right? He Again, he got some really good artifact items. He ended up getting Trench Coat again. Trench Coat kind of instant wins the fight as well. But he's also level 10 now, so it's virtually impossible to win. Which is why I roll past the charm, because I think uh, I, I, this is not going to win the fight. This either. I was like, oh, maybe a Radiant item. To be honest, I don't think this wins the fight either. But it's probably the best I was going to get. And again, I have to play around uh, getting Zephyr. I'm trying to confuse him. He does get confused. He goes for the spot where I had them last round. But I put a Kali beside Kalista, so it's a 50-50. So there was actually a 50% chance that uh, a Kali got Zephyr over Kalista there. But you can see, right, like, against players who aren't 
you know, super advanced, you can kind of just force things and perform well. Yeah, that, that's the game, right? Because I just forced this comp without really having the right items, without having super great augments for it. I was like, ah, I just want to play it, so I'm going to. But yeah, anyways, thank you. If you liked the video, please leave a like and let me know if you have any questions. You can leave comments. All right, appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next week.